Greetings. This is the fifth video in the series on um, mood disorders. And today we're going to talk about hypomanic episodes and persistent depression. So we've talked about major depressive disorder and mania. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, if you remember early on in one of the earlier slides, we talked about how in mood disorders, what we're looking at is what is it? In other words, is it a elevated mood or a depressed mood, high or low? And then severity and duration, how bad and how long? So is it up or down? How bad and how long? When we get to the hypomanic episode, if you look at the diagnostic criteria here, from A through D, it is exactly the same as a manic episode. It does say here four days as opposed to a week. Um, it's not like anybody is sitting with their watch and, and clocking those few days. I don't know why the DSM distinguishes here on those last three days. Um, it's, it's not a significant uh, difference in duration. And everything else is exactly the same, except for E. And when you look down here at E, what you see is the episode is not severe enough to cause marked impairment in social or occupational functioning or to necessitate hospitalization. If there are psychotic features, the episode is, by definition, manic. So, what this is telling us is that a hypomanic episode is not as severe as a manic episode. The features are the same, and the difference is in severity. So if it's severe enough to cause impairment in social or occupational functioning, so you, your friends and family are noticing, you can't go to work or school, or you actually have to be hospitalized because it's so severe, then that is not a hypomanic episode. That is probably a manic episode. If there are psychotic features, by definition, this is a manic episode. So we'll talk a little bit about that in a bit about psychosis and um, mood disorders. Let's look at persistent depressive disorder. This used to be called dysthymia, and in the DSM-5, it was changed to persistent depressive disorder. So those two are the same thing. This uh, persistent depressive disorder is similar to, to depression. You'll see similar features. The primary differences are in severity and duration. It is less severe than a major depressive episode, but it is also longer. So remember, with a major depressive episode, we were looking at two weeks, right? Here we're looking at a period of two years. So very, very different in duration. Some people refer to this as chronic depression. Um, and some of us prefer persistent because chronic can lead to hopelessness. You know, the idea that something is chronic gives one a sense that it's not treatable, and it is treatable, but it is also very persistent. Um, so, while depressed, <clears throat> two or more of the following, two or more. So we have fewer features. Poor appetite or overeating, insomnia or hypersomnia. So. Again, we have the weight with poor appetite or overeating. We have uh, sleeping too much or not enough, low energy, low self-esteem, poor concentration and difficulty making decisions. So we saw those in depression and feelings of hopelessness. So what, what is less severe here is look at number four, for example. We look at low self-esteem. In major depressive disorder, that was, let's look at that. In major depressive disorder, we saw feelings of worthlessness or excessive or inappropriate guilt, which may be delusional. And it's not just self-reproach or guilt about having depression. So feelings of worthlessness and excessive or inappropriate guilt is worse than what we see here, which is low self-esteem. Um, low self-esteem is I'm not feeling good about myself, but it's also not I'm totally worthless, necessarily. 
Uh, poor concentration or difficulty making decisions is the same. Feelings of hopelessness, we saw that in major depression also, but in a major depressive episode, we also saw uh, thoughts of death and um, suicidal ideation, potentially. So um, this is less severe and it lasts a lot longer. So what this looks like in, in reality is a person who probably functions pretty well. They're going to work, they're going to school. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, maybe they spend a lot of time in bed. Maybe they overeat when they're feeling sad. They're not as energetic as they would like to be. Um, they, they're not happy. And this is still a disorder. It's, it's still somebody who's suffering needlessly. Remember, the goal of psychotherapy is not to change people. It is to alleviate suffering. And if the person is suffering enough to get to therapy, then it's our job to help, right? Um, so this is somebody who goes typically goes through life with symptoms, often puts up with them, often just thinks that it's their personality, maybe tries some different things, um, maybe things like yoga or meditation, exercise, and all those can be really helpful. Um, and if they're not helpful enough, then therapy might be able to help. But this is somebody who's been dealing with this for a long time. Again, if we see psychosis, this is not uh, dysthymia. It's not dep uh, persistent depressive disorder. It's a major depressive episode if we're seeing psychosis because that means that it's severe. Okay. And what this brings us to looking at dysthymia or sorry, persistent depression and hypomania brings us to the differences between bipolar 1 and bipolar 2. I'm sorry, I'm going to go back here. No. Nope. Yeah. I'm going to go here. So, bipolar 1, what we're going to see is full manic episodes and full depressive episodes. The capital M is manic, the capital D is major depression. The little m is hypomania. So, it's like smaller, lesser uh, manic episodes. So if this black line here is euthymia, what we're seeing here is mania, and what we're seeing here is major depression. This is bipolar 1. In bipolar 1, we see swings from major depression to manic episodes. Um, it can be absolutely debilitating. Uh, there are periods often where the person can function. Um, you see some here. Now this makes it look, I have to say, this makes it look very neat and simple, right? Either you're up or down or you're on your way. And there are these nice uh, kind of almost uh, uh, measured intervals between episodes. It's not like that at all in real life. A person can be in a major depression for years. A person can be in a manic episode for years um, and then spend a very short period of time at the other end of the spectrum. Or you can have rapid cycling. You can have somebody who cycles every few days, every few weeks. So, you know, when you look at this, understand that this is just a, a, a demonstration to make it really clear that what we're talking about is mania and major depression. And of course, life is never as neat as that. What we're looking at in bipolar 2 here is again still major depressive episodes but hypomanic never full-blown manic episodes that's bipolar 2 bipolar 2 is a newer newer created disorder it's not that it's it hasn't existed it was given a name more recently than bipolar disorder by the way if you ever hear manic depression that is the old word for bipolar, the old term for bipolar disorder. It's the same thing. It was just changed to bipolar disorder, that's all. So, what you see in bipolar 2 is lesser elevated moods, but the same kind of major depressive episodes. Uh, bipolar 2 can be very debilitating also in slightly different ways. Um, people sometimes experience 
some euphoria in their hypomanic episodes, they often experience a lot of irritability. And suicide rates are higher for people with bipolar 2 than with bipolar 1. And what's interesting about that is that it probably has to do with higher levels of irritability and agitation. And down here, we see just major depressive disorder. Again, the black line is euthymia. The black line is just absence of any particular mood. This is being called unipolar depression here. So there's only one, only one pole. Uh, there's no up. So it's unipolar. It's major depression. And each of these low points would probably be a major depressive episode. And when the person is feeling better, they're feeling back to euthymia. They don't ever soar as one does with mania or hypomania. So I hope that is helpful in uh, understanding about bipolar 1 and bipolar 2. And I'm going to end this video here.